Hello, good afternoon, everyone. So yeah, here we are today to talk about the sixth region of Africa uh, following its recent launching of uh, its flag. Uh, so we are here to talk about not only launching of uh, the flag, but also uh, to talk about other things related to the sixth region of Africa. So we are here, uh, we have here with us Mama Desta Maghu or Dr. Desta Maghu. Uh, I will tell you later why I call her Mama Desta. Welcome, Mama Desta. Oh, give thanks, my dear Mahalet. It's always great to be on Connect Africa and to engage with you and your listeners and viewers. Okay, great. Now it's good to have you here. Uh, yes, she's uh, no stranger to this show. Uh, she has been here uh, more than a couple of uh, times. Uh, yes, so recently, uh, no, before we go to the question, let me just say briefly about Mama Desta. Uh, she is the Diaspora African Forum liaison to the African Union. Uh, she's also so she's multi-professional, a creative consultant specializing in arts, branding, and creative cultural industries. Uh, also, her current focus is in arts promotion of uh, cannabis for health, medicine, and nutrition with keen interest in indigenous cultural rights and practices. Uh, Mama Desta is a, a Jewish doctor uh, and also allow me, uh, but for me, allow me in this, uh, while we're having this uh, interview, I will call her Mama Desta because she is indeed a mama that's often left my, out my from the <laughs> yeah, that's often left out from the job of uh, all mamas, you know, it's like mentioned at the end or never mentioned, but it's a full time yeah. job, isn't it? Yes, it's to me, it's, it's a title. It's, it's, a, it's a prestigious, honorable title. So I'm, I'm always honored to include that, even more so than my Jewish doctorate or any other accolade. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a job that, uh, you know, all mamas, to all mamas out there, that you can never retire from it. You know? <laughs> yeah. Ever. Like yeah. Whether you give birth or not, you know? I said, whether you give birth or not, are you hearing me okay? Yeah. No, no, it's better. So, yeah. So, yeah, whether you give birth or not, you know, um, and it also weaves right into, you know, what we're going to talk about in terms of the sixth region and the creation and the womb and the mother and um, the role that we play. So I'm, I'm really happy to be here with you today, Mahalet. Thank you. So recently, uh, the Diaspora and African Forum, uh, in which your organization is has launched actually in the beginning of this month uh it's the flag of the sixth region of africa uh i mean you will, you will definitely share with us how that felt after all these years after its establishment now to launch its flag but it's always to bring that historical perspective of you know if you can inform us uh inform us how it is conceptualized, this sixth region of Africa, how it is established, uh, and then, you know, what does it mean, for, you know, for you personally or for the for the African diaspora, uh, for uh, lack of a better word, diaspora, but yeah, what it means, uh, you know, the launching of this, this flag. Yes, please, Mama Desta. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, you know, we're actually in the 20th year since the, um, I want to say, the quasi recognition of the African Union of the sixth region or what most call the diaspora. And so let's take it back a bit to 1963, where the OAU, Organization of African Unity, was established here in Addis Ababa. But the goals of that organization were liberation from colonization um, post the Berlin Conference. So that was the mission, um, solidarity, unification, and again, liberation within the continent. Now, as um, the 21st century came upon us and the transition went from the OAU to the African Union, the scope um, became much wider and included now the sixth region because as opposed to the 60s, 50s and um, colonial times, when most Blacks, I mean, even in the United States, Black folks didn't start voting until the 1960s, traveling on buses. We all know the stories, Rosa Parks, etc. 
um, there was not the opportunity and the power that was available upon the establishment of the African Union. So under the leadership of Chairman Alpha Canary at the time, and in our case, Ghana, and I'll talk about the Diaspora Africa Forum after this, um, Ghana, President Kufour, um, was a champion for the recognition of the African diaspora formally. So several consultative meetings took place in Jamaica, Barbados, Brazil, um, various parts of the um, of, of universe, right? Mm -hmm. the, the black universe, the six regions, trying to find out what were the wants, opportunities, shared goals and aspirations, and how could the African Union be strengthened, again, as a new entity with the role of the African diaspora or the sixth region that was bringing not just remittances, because that certainly was the entry point, let's face it, you know, when the African countries did the numbers and realized millions and millions were pouring in annually to each country. So multiply that by 55, and we've got billions that's pouring in, whether formally or informally, to the continent from the African diaspora. Um, nonetheless, um, the Diaspora Africa Forum was moved, like many organizations that have been established since then, to engage with the African Union. But what made the Diaspora Africa Forum a bit different that was that our mandate was to help um, strengthen the African Union, support the African Union. So most Diaspora organizations are civil society centered and oriented, that is but one of the aspects of the work that we do at the Diaspora Africa Forum. But our main work is focused on, as I said, engagement and support for the African Union, um, which means also member states, including our country, Ghana, where we are registered and we have been granted diplomatic status for going on 20 years to facilitate us to move um, in a way to do the work that we need to do, which is basically policy work, advocating to African states that, you know, we must be included and reintegrated. And what does that look like? What does reintegration, not just repatriation, but reintegration of the sixth region look like? And further also educating on the, the differences and the challenges and opportunities that come with it between the um, historic African diaspora like myself, my ancestors taken away from West Africa, dropped in Jamaica, and here I have returned now. Um, again, through the Maafa, those of us were taken to the sixth region um, compared to the contemporary African diaspora, which would be continental African who are studying abroad, working in exile, um, but by choice somewhat um, have decided it was best to, to go and move ahead. So the Diaspora Africa Forum has really um, decided, although it's been a very difficult road, it's not easy when the continent is concerned with its own internal affairs, um, and that's really good to sort of keep pushing and pushing and pushing the envelope to say, we're not just a remittance, we're not just a number, but we have other assets and value, um, which also are balanced by the moral responsibility, right? The moral responsibility that we have to recognize Africans because we are the children of the continent that were taken away. So there's this moral duty also and connectivity that I think trumps the economic, legal, and all other aspects, which really does ensure that sense of building trust, harmony, and a true integration or reintegration that's not based solely on, as I said, political, economic, or other, um, other opportunities that may be available. Hmm. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mama Desta, for that really uh, detailed insights that you have given us. Uh, so how does it feel now launching this flag? I mean, 
personally for the diaspora in Africa forum and also politically, what does it mean? Exactly. Because let me distinguish this. The diaspora Africa forum, we have our flag. We have flown our flag for almost 20 years. It's purple, it has the map of Africa, black strap, it's quite distinct and looks nothing like this map. Likewise, several organizations, UNIA, right, Marcus Garvey has red, black, and green. So it's not unusual. You're breaking, Mama Desta. No, like we can't hear you. No. You're muted now. No. Here. How yes. Is that, is that better? Oh, much okay. better. I think when it's you so come closer. Lose, we're going to lose this. <laughs> okay. All right. Are we well, good to hear it? Yeah. Okay. Good. Voila. Fabulous. Yes. So, um, as I was saying, the Diaspora Africa Forum and most African organizations have their own flag. And I think that's to inc be encouraged because, you know, each of us as sixth region returning home, we're coming with different experiences. We're coming with different aspirations, hopes, influences, etc. So I think it's appropriate for us to have this various brand or flag. This sixth region flag, on the other hand, represents the entire sixth region. And it was a very bold, some miss in Jamaica, we use the term feisty, um, mm -hmm. assertion to say, this is what we're going to do. But we're living in a time where if you are not committed, assertive, and going out rather than sitting and asking, what can Africa do for me? What can the African Union do for me? You will continuously knock, 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 knock. It is better for you to take initiative, engage, and then get response. Some may say apology, you know, um, than to just sit on your hands and wait. And so this sixth region flag has come from years of us going to consultations, meetings, sitting with other diaspora organizations um, and forerunners and people who really care and love about this. And it was elements from that, that this particular flag was founded. So even the construction of it, it's the same African Union flag and color that they use for the map of Africa with the 55 stars. So we use those six stars, the five within the continent, designating east, west, north, south, and central. And then the six star sort of on the west coast of Africa with a streamer because it's in movement, it's in motion as it tries to re-enter the continent. And it's it's set, it's it's um positioned on top of I don't know if you can share it. There we go. It's on it's positioned on top of a globe. Again, just showing that we are indeed in the world. So it's quite simple. And again, the green, you know, that's that's our wealth, that's that's the, the richness of the continent, the gold again, you know, the plethora of resources. And the black, we are the black people of Africa, the mothers and fathers of origin. We know that the continent now has brown people and white people that claim to be Africans <laughs> and they've been there for several decades, some centuries in terms of Northern Africa. And um, that's a different discourse than what we're saying here with the representation of um black so again this is a flag that represents and is consistent with discussions um experiences that we have been having for decades as we try to re-enter um the continent and of course we know the rastafarians in terms of following in the footsteps of the marcus garvey back to Africa movement, which followed the Paul Coffey movement from the 1700s. So we've been always trying to get home and redefining ourselves 
and this symbol now which actually will um be be um flown um honorarily at the african continental free trade Agre agreement secretariat based also in accra ghana along with the other 55 countries in a show of solidarity so that's going to be happening during black history month and why this is important is that um and I, I don't want to digress but i think it's certainly important when we talk about six regions there's a reason uh, there's a reason mm -hmm. and one major reason is how do we engage with the five regions mm -hmm. now with the african continental free trade agreement we have a platform and a mechanism in which all 55 countries and our trading within services, the movement of people, and it's only going to get better because it's brand new, right? Mm -hmm. So now with the sixth region, how do we engage? And this flag will be a symbol there at the, um, um, the secretariat. And we hope to distribute it very, very soon at the African Union and all member states. So they will always know if they ever forget this little flag will remind them. So mm -hmm. it's symbolic. It really is symbolic. And we intend to recognize and honor this symbol that again, we just basically put elements together that have already been out there. And um, it's it's a bold move, but that's what the Diaspora Africa Forum does. We make bold moves. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Mama Desta. Indeed, what a beautiful flag and um, the details in it. And what a month, what a timing to launch it as well. It's yeah. incredible. Let me just say this. You know, our ambassador, Dr. Erica Bennett, born in the United States, in the south and has devoted her life for the last 40 odd years working living moving on the continent and that has given us as an organization a lot of soft power and what is soft power as compared to diplomacy because diplomacy we more think about that in a political sense right mm -hmm. governments all have their diplomats and they go and there's certain jargon soft power on the other hand are what we within the civil society context um, an activist community who have garnered trust from the people in government all the way to grassroots are able to sit down with whether heads of states, ministers, policy people to be able to impact and, 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 and share data and sound information as to why this integration has to happen. And so this is what trajectory we have been on um, as an organization, again, under the guidance of Ambassador Erica Bennett um, with a really strong board of elders. And this is another thing where this flag is concerned. This has come from our elders, our elder mothers, our queen mothers who sat down there in Ghana Mama T, Dr. Juliet, again, um, Dr. Erica Bennett, just to name a few who serve on our board. And as mothers, went to the Asante Haney, the traditional leader, went to President Kafour, because you see, some um, speaking frankly, we're family. But why? How comes they did this? They didn't consult with every billion diaspora in the world. We didn't all vote on this flag. Well, mm. no, but our traditional elders, our mothers said, now is the time to do this. We cannot wait anymore for the democratic way of doing this and we'll send it out and we'll get ideas and we'll bring it back. We did that within a small group, but very active and strong group, you know, of diaspora organizations. And again, we're very, very proud of what the organization has done and what this is going to mean for us. Hmm. Interesting. No, it, it's really important that you you made that clear. Definitely, <laughs> people will come up there. Where are we represented in this choice of colors or whatever? True. Yeah. Um, uh, tell me this. This bothers me. You know, for a long time in my mind, as per my reading or sometimes viewing documentary is is concerned, the connection between the Africans outside of the continent and inside, 
you know, has been there and you know, they have been trying to connect, as you rightly pointed out earlier, the, the natural bonding is there. So, you know, surpassing this economical or political, all these, you know, names, uh, we have seen it, you know, through uh, Marcus Garvey uh, and also Dr. Mela Kubayan, people have come and they even reached to the level of, you know, helping if we take the example of Ethiopia during the Italian invasion uh, of Ethiopia, uh, they have helped us, you know, practical, which we don't see now. So I want you to do a kind of a comparison if you can. So now here we are, okay, there is a sixth region recognized this name by the African Union. How do you view, you know, its representation at the AU? You know, wh where does it stand? Um, also how recognized uh, uh, it is meaning the political, economical, and cultural importance of the African diaspora. Uh, and the third one is how advanced the relation between this one people, but located in two places, okay, outside of the continent and inside the continent. Right. Let me start with the latter. And I think you've done a really good job in um, sharing that information with us because through CARICOM and um, 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 our dear brother out of Barbados, um, Ambassador David Comisong has really been at the helm of this for some time. We've been in the trenches seeing each other in various places agitating over the last few decades. And I think in terms of substantive, this is the first time that we've seen it get this far. And this is not for want or for trying. I remember facilitating a meeting for President Gonzalez, who was then the head of CARICOM with Chairman Canare in 2005, right here in Addis, to discuss a secretariat of CARICOM being held here at AU and again providing observer status um, for the various islands um, or CARICOM in itself. Well, so again, some headway has been made. Um, and I think, again, you've shared that information. So from a political standpoint, I do believe that that is um, en, en, en route and it's going to continue to happen. Um, and again, remember, the African Union is a government entity. And that in mind, engagement has to be done government to government right? Civil society organizations cannot just walk in there and engage unless you're engaging through, let's say, ECOSOC, you know, um, which is an arm of the African Union that deals with civil society. So that, again, is how we were able to position ourselves through an MOU and saying in our mandate clearly that our first effort is to support the African Union in the engagement of the African diaspora. Now, that has given us a lot of heavy lifting and a whole lot of left eye looks when we walk into the African Union compound um, to lobby, to agitate, to hold meetings. But they're gracious. They're gracious. They're kind. They give us that opportunity whenever there are meetings and consultations held with member states in terms of you know the last few years bringing them up to speed these are member states now with strategies to engage the diaspora and so forth we've been called we've been called to the table we've done training of um particularly in west africa of ambassadors that are going out to serve in areas that are predominantly filled with african diaspora be it the indigenous diaspora of that respective country if it's ghana and or the Black American or Caribbean or South American or European communities. So we have been able to do trainings to sensitize because again, this is the reason why we use this term reintegration. We have been separated from each other for centuries and colonization has been quite successful in ripping apart our culture and our <laughs> history and our sense of connectivity. And so, we, the Diaspora Africa Forum, or DAF, 
try to come in and spend as much time as possible with the government in terms of sensitization. So I think one of the things that has allowed us to make headway, and mind you, we're moving the needle very slowly, but we're doing it. And it also depends on who is at the helm. You know, right now we've got um, the chairperson, um, Faki, who the diaspora in the sixth region is not necessarily his um, priority. And so we've not been able to make as much headway as we have done in the past with um, Dr. Nkosozana, um, Shlamini Zuma, um, with Chairman Kanare, um, you know, and, and, and so forth. So it's been a bit of a challenge during his um, um, chairmanship to be able to push as much as we want. So now we've sort of redirected and been dealing a lot with specific countries to get, because remember as member states, they have the power to be able to push agendas um, along. So it's not where we want it to be. And on a political level, unless it's through CARICOM or the countries, we're not going to see much, but it does make a big difference when, for instance, the murder of George Floyd happened, that we had the African Union send a statement, you know? And we um, agitate for things like something is happening in Haiti, send a word. Anything happening to black people in the African diaspora, the African Union has a duty, morally and otherwise, to be able to send a one-line sentence. It's not political. We recognize, we stand with, we feel the pain of, we sympathize with. And so that in itself helps again to build a sense of, of solidarity, you know, to answer in terms of the economic and other things. We are seeing more and more investment happening from the sixth region onto the continent. Mind you, it's, it's small to medium large businesses um, for the most part. But as the African trade, um, Continental Free Trade Agreement expands, becomes more solid, and currencies are in place that allow movement of money and so forth, and even this one visa, this one passport that allows us to move, again, I believe that we'll be able to see more opportunities for the diaspora. But I do want to challenge you because I listened to one of your programs where you had um, an expert on talking about the free trade agreement and spoke about the possibility of providing information, maybe doing a tutorial or a workshop mm -hmm. for serious um, um, investors and small businesses, especially women who are trading, not just within the continent, but let's say want to send castor oil from Jamaica to Ghana you know, um, or cinnamon and spices coming from Grenada into, you know, Ethiopia. So we do need guidance. And again, this is, this is the purpose now with this flag, this six region flag, it's a symbol. We don't ever want them to forget us. And they only remember us during February for Black History Month or December for Kwanzaa or, yeah. you know, just no, we want a constant reminder um you know that this is what it is these six stars and guess what if there's somebody else that comes up with a bigger better flag and wants to do the lobbying to the african union and the heads of states as we're doing you know what it's okay but for me why i made sure that i supported this when daf and the other organizations brought it on i was like it's timely. Why are we reinvented the wheel? Let's trust the mamas. Let's trust the elders. Let's trust ourselves and begin to get behind and stop the nitpicking so we can move forward. Because while we're nitpicking, guess what? They're coming in and they're picking us off mm -hmm. one by one. So let's continue to say no more to this, no more small mindedness. Let's broaden our horizon and stand with each other when we're making progress. Hmm. Wow. Thank you. This is why I love to talk to you. This is why I love to listen to you. No, thank you really. 
you have touched you know upon the challenges first of all thank you very much so now i can think about my assignment what to do in terms of you know giving a kind of a webinar training that brings a caribbean uh, uh, or Afri any african diaspora traders or investors small medium large and then on the other hand this trainer and how they can get advantage or benefit both sides out of uh, the African continental free trade area. A good one. Thank you. Uh, yeah. So having said that, you have touched upon, you know, some of the challenges that you, you know, you have uh, or that the, uh, the six uh, region of Africa faces currently being, uh, you know, that it's not a priority for the current leadership. Uh, what are the benefits? First of all, if you can go detail, you know, what more challenges it has and also what benefit it brought for the diaspora since it has been established and recognized by the union. Yeah. You know, I want to go further back to centuries ago. Okay. When we were rounded up and put, as Bob Marley sings, in the bottomless pit, right? Um, yet so we had this redemption song. We have always wanted to come home. We have always wanted to reconnect with our kith and kin. And politics, colonial systems um, have been the main reason why we have been divided. And so... Pan-Africanism and um, engaging on a political level is so very important and relevant at this time. Um, however, and, and I know I'm probably taking a very wide um, um, approach to, to responding, but nothing is about right now. It's about what happened before. How does it inform where we are right now and where we will be a hundred years from now? We can't continue to disconnect who we are, be it through language group, be it through the region that we're born and raised in or taken to or whatever. Um, we have to ensure that we're connecting all the dots and looking at these things as a level of consistency. And there's times where we make great leaps. There's other times where we have to crawl, but we have to keep the inertia. We keep the momentum mm -hmm. going, right? So, you know, from, from my perspective, um, the recognition of the sixth region at this time through both the free trade agreement, through engagement of African Union, through engagement of all member states, and also civil society and the young people recognizing the value that we all have. And I keep going back to the morality. The morality is not based on whether I'm a, an engineer coming home to help rebuild bridges or mm -hmm. whether I'm a great teacher coming in to bring a new pedagogy that's going to help the children in Ghana learn quicker, or whether mm -hmm. I'm a medical doctor that's coming in with cures for various viruses. That is secondary to seeing me, to recognizing me, to seeing us in each other. And this is something, dare I say, that we need both in terms of how we see those coming home from the sixth region and how we see each other in our very countries. Because right now, that is one of the greatest um, um, things that's being weaponized. And I'm speaking of the lack of value, the lack of morality that we have towards each other. Therefore, our life has no value right? And so we can just start wars and be manipulated and do what we have to do to each other for crumbs or crowns, right? Positions or a little thing so you can eat and get through today. What I think the African diaspora, particularly those of us who have been through the slavery experience, the neocolonial Jim Crow in, in, in relation to those who were raised in the United States, we can bring that spirit of resilience. We bring with us that genetic memory that never made us forget, nor yearn, nor desire 
to returning home to Africa because this is our home. This is our land, first and foremost. This is where we're from, right? And there's no place like home. Now, I can live anywhere in, in, in the world. That's my right to live anywhere in the world. So we're not saying that we don't have the right to live anywhere we want. What we're talking is about how do we reconnect with who we are in order to be the best that we can be. We need to be able to come home to the continent to be able to do that. Whether physically, spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, the reconnection is what starts the healing. And Mother Africa needs healing. What has happened on this continent, the level of rape, the level of, 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 of pillage, the level of murder and mayhem, that has happened on the continent over the last several centuries has not happened anywhere else on the face of this earth to the level and the extreme that it has happened here and continues to happen here. Hmm. And the way to solve this is again, this recognition and value of who we are and what we can bring to the table. Now we know once we see each other, of course, we're looking at the strengths that we come because when you come home to your mother or your father after being gone for so long, you come and you bow and what have I brought? You know, I brought these skills that I learned. I brought this education. I brought the willingness to learn. I brought the willingness to humble myself and work with the village, the community, etc., in order to help move development along by us and for us. So I think now is, it continues to be the time because again, this is nothing new. What is new is maybe the numbers that are coming in. What is new is again, the, um, the way that things are happening in each country because each country is going to deal with this differently. For instance, in Ethiopia, which by the way is probably one of the longest or oldest countries that has been engaging the African diaspora, even mm -hmm. setting up Shashamani land grant for who? Black people of the West with, with again, emphasis on African-Americans to go back to your point about the relationship of those of us in the diaspora who are giving help and engaging and how are we seen then as to compare to how we're seen now, you know? Ethiopia has granted residency, right, based mm. on lobbying for decades to Rastafari, amongst others, permanent residency. Ghana has granted citizenship, right? So Benin has also granted citizenship on a limited. So things are beginning to move in terms of this recognition and reintegration. And if we juxtapose it to what happened during the 1930s um, and, and up to 41, when Italians occupied Ethiopia specifically, and the EWF was founded as a way mm -hmm. to come and support, galvanize support for the country, the difference is now the, the power that ones and they have in the African diaspora, the ability to use media, because this is one of the biggest challenges, how we're seen in the media, what are the messages that are getting out there? So while back in the day we were gathering food and money and sending in and, and other forms of support, now we can get into social media campaigns because that is moving. We have influencers that can take up the cause and say, no, the propaganda that you're hearing, that's not what's happening. Listen to these other voices. Listen to these things. Again, I got to go back to the hashtag no more yeah. campaign that has expanded from, again, Ethiopia, Horn of Africa, continent of Africa, sixth region. Hmm. You know, so hmm. there are many doors that are open, but I caution us. We can't sit down and continue to say, well, what's the AU doing now? And what, what are you doing? How are you pushing them? Because... They don't business right now. Everything else is on the table. They'll have a cup of tea with you, take a nice picture, but then what? It's up to us. We have to agitate. We were freed from slavery, not sitting now and waiting for someone to come, 
right? Africa was freed from colonization, not sitting and waiting and saying, please, please, please. So this is the same spirit that we have to have, and especially as queen mothers, to defend our children and do this for generations to come. We have to be fearless. Hmm. Yeah, and indeed, that's how it reached, actually. It's milestones, the connection between the two people. It's one people, okay, but, you know, being outside of Africa and here, because they didn't sit just around and they were constantly looking for how to connect, how to escape their slave master, how to go back to their ancestors. So, uh, yeah, I think... Uh, it's important, as you say, that we don't sit around and we have to look for uh, for us, uh, you know, uh, what should I do? I mean, you know, this little, little achievement that has been achieved using that and, you know, putting our own effort, what can we do further? We should not wait for the African Union to do everything. Not, not that because it's not its mandate, but because it's not functioning beyond this. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And Pan-Africanism has never fallen within the grasp of any one country, any one community, um, you know, and, and, and so we have to know that this spirit, which is, again, historic, current and futuristic, um, has a place and a space for all of us. And there is something for each of us to do. If one organization is doing something, you do something else. And sometimes organizations like ours, we get together with other um, diaspora organizations where the twain meet. It may be on media, communications, it may be on immigration. So we don't always have to be sitting at the table all the time discussing the same things because, again, we're coming from different perspectives and even aspire for different things. Organizations coming out of the United States may have and do have different mandates and aspirations than those coming out of Jamaica or Barbados. And it's good. It's good and it's necessary. So really what we need right now is to understand that unity or solidarity does not mean uniformity. It means strengthening each other to the best of our ability mm -hmm. to move ahead. There are so many of us and we're all over the world. We cannot wait for this one leader and this one person. You are a leader. Develop your children to be leaders. We all, just like the sea, the sand on the sea, each one of us, you know, if we were all to disappear, it doesn't happen. But you pull us together and now you have a foundation upon which an entire ocean can sit. So again, let's go back to value. How do we value one another? And, you know, one of the things I'm excited about, because we don't have enough platforms to share our stories, and Addis Ababa University Institute of Ethiopian Studies um, brought me on a couple of years ago to curate the first Pan-African wing located in the university. Most may know Sidis Kilo as the premier university of Ethiopia by Black, for Black on the continent, established um, over six decades ago you know, seven decades ago, um, really allows us to show Ethiopia and the role of Ethiopia in Pan-Africanism. Many times, again, we relegate it to Jamaica or Ghana or, you know, Manchester, where the Pan-African Congress took place. But seriously speaking, Ethiopia um, has been pivotal and continues to. So I want to make sure that we keep in touch with you when we do our grand opening um, of the facility, the, the, the place is endorsed by the African Union. And so we're very, very thrilled and just happy to know that we have Connect Africa as a media partner to speak about and share about these things and excited about the future. Yeah, indeed. Very important, which I forgot also one of the things that you do. As I said, she's multi-profession. But yes, we have to bring it forward and, you know, for people and see how people can, can, can as an Ethiopian, I'm very excited that the Adisawa University has decided to have that wing of Pan-Africanism, uh, you know, like a wing for it uh, in terms of having books and other things. Uh, and also how can, you know, how the diaspora and others inside, outside, can connect and you know uh, how 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 to develop it you know to what it's Absolutely. planning to yeah. uh, to to achieve 
And the no. one thing about the Pan-African Wing, we do have a space in there that will allow for programs, lectures, workshops. It is a multimedia space. So, you know, hybrid events can be done in the space and it's gorgeous. Um, again, it's where His Majesty's um, office was in the Gwinnett Lowell Palace where he would receive international guests and so forth. So his original um, items are also in there and his relationship as founder, founding father of the OAU, as one who allowed and gave so many scholarships to students from, we have, I think, 15 African countries, Rwanda, Tanganyika, was, as it was called back then, Ghana, and, and so forth. So it really is a rich place. It also has a, uh, a part in there that looks at the Rastafari movement as, again, one of the pillars of Pan-Africanism um in in the 20th century so we're very excited and thank you so much mahalet now well, i'm very happy and I'm, I'm i will be honored to do that and that hopefully i will be there in person but if not we yes. do it online online <laughs> yeah so tell me one thing quickly so how is the sixth region of africa represented in the african union there's a specific is it DAF because i know that the DAF has a diplomatic status or other with different CSOs, how does it happen? No, essentially, um, the sixth region, um, there's an office by the name of CEDO that okay. comes under the chairman's office. Yeah. And CEDO has been there, again, for the life of the African Union. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's citizens and diaspora um, units or, or organization in a sense. Um, frankly, the CEDO as a unit has not been quite active over the last several months, um, year or so. COVID may be also a part of it amongst other, again, shifting concerns because if the chairperson is not pushing it, funding it, supporting it, even if it's a part of the, the African Union, um, just like other organizations, right, parliamentary, uh, the parliament, right? Pan African Parliament, NEPAD, and these entities. No. Where are they? So, as civil society, the only way to really um, engage is through ECOSOC, and ECOSOC does has two have two seats, and we did also serve um, on ECOSOC in terms of the diaspora. So there are a couple of seats on ECOSOC for engagement. However, again, the African Union is for member states, so. Our MOU, for instance, is with CEDO, through CEDO, again, to support the African Union and to support the member states in understanding challenges and opportunities in integrating. But there is no beyond the spirit, let's say, and the, um, the, the in principle recognition of the sixth region to say, you are my people. There is no formal structure or entity hmm. beyond what's being developed through CARICOM because again it has to be government to government much like the United Nations right it represents all the various nations so if you want to engage as civil society you can either go through your your country or you can go through ECOSOC so again in terms of diaspora issues um, as the sixth region, we do have a strong alliance with Ghana. As a matter of fact, I just wanted to take a moment because I know we're out of time now, just to read the letter from uh... you are. We don't hear you, Mama Desta. You're freezed. We can't hear you, Mama Desta. I think, yeah, she's freezed. We can't hear you, Mama Desta. Okay, maybe she'll come back again.
Yeah, take a moment. Okay, we are trying to fix it. Sorry for that little technical problem. Yeah. Ah, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, it's good. Yeah, I know that you're running out of time to go to the next meeting. So, yeah, the, uh, we are just a bit less than our hour, one hour that we planned. Uh, okay, you were about to read the uh, later. I don't know if you want to still, if it is short. Yeah, I'll, I'll just read a couple excerpts. Um <laughs> From it, and this is from President, former President of Ghana, John Kofor, who um, is just recognizing the designer of the flag. He says, um, "Thank you for your kind words, attributing the start of the diplomatic mission to my administration. You've proven your commitment to Ghana and Africa, and I'm proud of you." Um, and he goes on to say, "I commend the form's ability to be self-sustaining, and also for gaining recognition and respect." of major institutions of the continent. Please accept my congratulations and commendations on this momentous occasion. I stand with you in your struggles and in your joyous occasion. Sincerely, John A. Kofor, President of Ghana. And so this notion of self-sustaining is very important because we made a conscious decision. We do not take funding from governments, from individuals, you know, special interest, anything like that. And so we have a lot of projects that we do to raise funds. Um, we consult, um, you know, that's how we raise funds. We also do um, matching. So for instance, if 
um, Rwanda or Ghana needs an expert in oil or in the arts, we team them up and then we're able to facilitate fees that way. But we think it's very important for us to be autonomous, to not be on anyone's payroll, that we have the flexibility to say what we want. Because many times, you know, the things that we have to say and the things that we defend are not um, easily understood. And sometimes they think, oh, you're too hard, you activists, you just, you know, you want too much, you want citizenship, you want this, you want that. <laughs> and it's not that at all, you know, we're just really trying to reinsert ourselves um, to the table, to a table that we belong at, that's our table, and um, to spike the memory, you know, of our brothers and sisters again, of who we are, that we're one. Hmm. Uh, yeah, but the continent needs activists, I think, not politicians at such a moment. That's what I believe. <laughs> I think we need active politicians. <laughs> yeah, maybe, yeah, that combined goes also, definitely. Yeah. One ambassador said to me um, some time ago, he said, you know, I really think that many ambassadors should also be artists because they are free. They speak their minds, they do. And so we've been seeing some of that bubbling up you know, um, you know, Bobby Wine, for instance, you know, so we've seen some of the artists, you know, trying to yeah. kind of pop up and, and make a statement. But um, I think everyone has a place. I think that, um, again, you know, comparing soft power, which the Diaspora Africa Forum, as President Kafour has alluded to, we work really hard to establish our relationship um with governments with important organizations african development bank um ECOWAS and so forth because we want to be seen as viable important partners that are bringing information um that are an asset and again just not a, a remittance you know we're not just a dollar sign or a pound sign coming in that, 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 that's important. True. Uh, Mama Desta, I'll give you the last two minutes to say your final word. Also, I have one burning question. Is there a definition of a diaspora, by the way? I did ask the Ethiopian yeah. officials and they were kind of confused. I was like, is it by the number of dollars that people have you say you define a diaspora? What is the definition of that? But anyway, it can be another, you know, another topic for another discussion. Sure, sure, yeah, sure, you, sure. You, 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 well, you I mean, very, 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 very quickly, I mean, like diameter, right, of a circle, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's expansive. So essentially, you know, is a geographical term more than anything. Okay. But this is why I love the term six region, because it empowers now. Much like we see five regions, you know, ECOWAS, the West African region, and we understand that each region comes with certain um, power, um, experience, resources, etc. This is now how we can begin to see the sixth region, um, aka the diaspora. It's 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 not as nebulous as the word diaspora. So okay. so I think it's meaningful, and and we need to continue to use it. I also finally want to say, you know, um, it's important for us to recognize in this time, as I said, we spend a lot of time criticizing each other. And guess what? Constructive criticism is really good. This is how DAF has grown. We've had to sit down and hear some very, very um, strong um, opinions, um, information that has helped us grow and become um you know the, the pinnacle that we are in terms of diaspora relations on the continent um again through the leadership of ambassador bennett and and our elders however we each have a role to play whether through organizations through individuals we all have a role to play and we cannot underestimate the power that we have and we cannot sit down and wait for someone to even identify that power within us before we can act. So the time is now, we all have a role to play, whether small or large, don't underestimate it. If you decide that you want to send a child to school as your contribution, if you want to take your family home 
every year so at least your children know the soil whatever it is engage engage with the continent and ensure you're doing your part to dispel the negative media and the negative narratives that they have out there about Africa. And it doesn't mean you have to sugarcoat, but it does mean that we have to be balanced. And those of us in the sixth region, AKA the diaspora, have been historically a big part of that propaganda when we're out there complaining, complaining, complaining. So let's, okay, we wanna complain, but let's balance it with the good, with the progress, because good things are happening on the continent. And it's a great time to be here. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mama Desta. Indeed, as I say, it has been my ritual always to say, invest on the children, teach the youth, teach the youth, and then we will just be fine in the next two, three decades. That, that's it. So wherever we are, just teach the youth. As Mama Desta says, if you can't bring them, let them know the way there's the soil, let them touch the soil as well. Let them have that connection as a child. Let, let it be printed, you know, and it, it will just grow. They will have, you know, as there's this thing that you told me, I think it was it during my research when I interviewed you, that your children, how they have that connection because, you know, one way or the other, each of them have visited Africa. Absolutely. And, you know, now that will be passed to your grandchildren or to their children. So we definitely have to uh, do that. And uh, thank you very much, Mama Desta, for your time. Uh, and next time, again, we will meet uh, again on a next topic, Pan the Pan-African Wing in the, at Addis Ababa University. Yeah. Uh, and thank you. Yeah, this is what uh, Connect Africa does, connecting uh, Africans outside and inside. So be a family. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Mahalet. <laughs> Bye. Bye.